Well, welcome to Baylor Healthcare Systems Hangout on Health. We're going to do this a couple of times each month with timely topics, important for your health, medicine topics. I'm Dr. David Winter. I'm an internal medicine physician board certified at Baylor Healthcare System in Dallas. And with me are Dr. Katon and Dr. Wiley. I'll let them introduce themselves. Dr. Wiley? Yes, my name is Dr. Sharice Wiley. I am a practicing internal medicine physician here at Baylor University, board certified internist. I take care of adults. Thank you. And Dr. Katon? Happy to be here. I'm Roger Katon. I'm also a board certified internist right here at Baylor, practicing with Dr. Wiley across the street. So we want to talk today about pertussis, also known as whooping cough, and measles. We're seeing a resurgence of these two illnesses now that we thought were going away years ago, but they're coming back. Dr. Wally, what's that about? Why are we seeing more whooping cough? Let's talk about that first. Yeah, sure. Well, one thing I want to point out, Dr. Winter, is that whooping cough never actually went away. We actually see it in waves every three to five years. Well, now, you know, in light of you know, parents not vaccinating their children as often, and we'll, I know we'll get into that, um, you know, later on in the segment, but um, we're seeing more of a reemergence of the whooping cough, and as I said, it never actually went away, so um, we see it every three to five years, but we're seeing it more now because parents are afraid to vaccinate their children. And to put that in context, so back before the vaccine was available, back in the mm -hmm. 1940s, there were about 200 to 250,000 cases a year and about 9,000 deaths of children. That's right. Yes. We got down to 25 deaths a year, maybe less than that. Now it's coming back up again. So we are seeing a major increase when we thought we had this disease under control. That's right. Dr. Katon, what do you see with this? What's the reason that whooping cough is coming back? Well, one of the reasons both of you just discussed was we do need to encourage vaccinations among children. And most of the people like nowadays, nurseries, most of our patients actually were surprised when we were telling them that they need to have vaccinations for pertussis before they go to nurseries or see newborns because that's where the highest risk of mortality is, is in the young kids. And one of the issues that we've had talking to our own patients about getting the tetanus shot or the Tdap was that some of them realized that Medicare may not pay for the pertussis vaccine. And so before they go see their grandchildren, we have recommended that they go ahead and get the pertussis vaccine or if they're getting symptoms of fevers or that barking cough, that they need to call us sooner than later. That's it's correct. It's the children, though, that aren't getting the vaccine. That's the biggest concern many yes. pediatricians talk about. Why is that? What's the real reason there? What, what's, what are mothers talking about that we need to discuss today? Yes, I think I can speak on that. As a mother of three children, um, you know, I guess we can go into that point of, you know, back in 1998. The uh, I think Dr. Wiley's computer may have just stalled. But one of the and he pointed out that he pointed out that MMR, and I know we'll talk about measles, mumps, and rubella soon, that vaccine, but MMR was linked to autism. As a result, um, and I want to say that that was false information, as a result, parents have been very skeptical about vaccinating their children. Um, we, as the medical community, should take responsibility for that, again, although it was false information, because one of our own put out the information. So as part of the medical community, it's also our job and responsibility to debunk or to highlight or inform our patients of the importance of vaccinations. But mothers are just afraid. As a mother of three, um, you know, sort of taking myself out of the realm of being a physician, if you hear, you know, that there is something linked to one of the most feared you know, developmental diseases, you're going to pay attention to that. And I think that's where our society is. They're, they're skeptical. Although we have, you know, tried to do a good job of educating our patients and educating the community and letting them know that, th that this research was, in fact, very false. Although it took 12 years for the, um, the Lancet, which was the original um, journal magazine, to publish um, that study, they did retract, you know, that that um, study, and it's well known now in the medical community that, that was a false, that that was false research. So we just have to do a good job 
um, as physicians, as healthcare providers, and let our community know that it's okay to vaccinate your children. It's not linked with autism. That we should do, um, you know, we. It's actually um, a detriment not to vaccinate our children, because as Dr. Katon said, um, there's an increased mortality when we don't vaccinate, especially with pertussis and measles. Dr. Winner. Yeah, Dr. Katon, you agree with that. I'm sure you've looked into this. So is the pertussis, the whooping cough vaccine, is it indeed safe? Yes. Uh, yes, all white vaccines have some side effects, but overall, from a long-term developmental standpoint, I would recommend pertussis to all my patients. And some and minor side effects. Some, what, what side effects are you talking about? You say they have some. What do you mean? Sore, soreness at the inj injection site. Some people can develop a low-grade fever for two or three days. But there are no significant long-term side effects developmentally That's from right. pertussis vaccine. And our pediatric colleagues, as you know, wrote a very nice article in the Journal of uh, Pediatrics in regards to the pertussis vaccine to and debunk the that issue. The big, excuse me, the big picture is that pertussis whooping cough actually kills. It's a very deadly disease. It spreads very, very rapidly. So the big picture is we've got to protect ourselves and our children from this condition, correct? That's right. And it's also important for us to inform our, especially our female patients who are in the childbearing age, um, to encourage them um, to, and I know that our um, OBGYNs do a fantastic job of this, but it's important to become vac to get vaccinated with every pregnancy in the third trimester. Um, and in that way, you will be able to pass um, you know, on immunity to the unborn child. So that's very, that's a very important point to um, to our our mothers and to our uh, patients in the childbearing age. Every pregnancy in the third trimester vaccination um, against whooping cough in the form of Tdap is needed. So how about other adults? So say you have grandkids or grandkids mm -hmm. on the way. Should we be concerned about that? Should adults be vaccinated on a regular basis now? Yes. And what, what frequency, how do you recommend that, Dr. Katon? For the tetanus vaccine, we usually recommend, because the pertussis vaccine comes with the tetanus, it's called Tdap, T-D-A-P. And what we usually do is recommend every 10 years for the tetanus. But if someone is about to go see their child and they never had received the pertussis vaccine, they only got the TD, tetanus diphtheria shot, we go ahead and give them the Tdap vaccine so that they're protected against the whooping cough also. And I want to make a point and say you need that at least two weeks prior mm -hmm. in order to have, you know, appropriate immunity. It takes two weeks for the antibodies to build up. This yes, is sir. Point. Now, this whooping cough, where did that name come from? What does whooping have to do with this illness, Dr. Wiley? Yeah, so um, basically the way that it, it happens when you're infected with the pertussis bacteria, um, what ends up happening is you are, you know, you go through this stage where you have runny nose, you have, that's the beginning stage, you have runny nose, low grade fever, and then after about one to two weeks, you go into these paroxysmals or these this repetitive coughing and the coughing is it comes in spasms and it's so um, violent and can be so repetitive that patients actually lose air and when they inspire you know to gra to gasp in air the sound that they make is called the whoop and that's where the name comes from ah. So that's how you recognize that, and it's, and it's very rapidly spread by a cough or sneeze, I understand, Dr. Keck. And if, if somebody has that, we're going to treat them, of course, with antibiotics, but how do you prevent others from getting that illness? Usually what, I've, I've had one case of pertussis, to be honest, and that was very impressive because I thought it was all going down. This was when I was a resident, and we were talking about that, and now, you know, since I've been at Baylor in 99, we've had two cases of pertussis when I was over there. And we recommend putting a mask over those people because coughing just into your arm like this <laughs> or um, putting it in your hand, you're still carrying the germs when you shake other people's hands. So we actually recommend people wearing a mask to prevent that once they've been diagnosed with pertussis. Or if you're coughing and you don't have a mask, then coughing into your arm is much better than coughing into your hand because you're more likely to shake hands with someone That's and right. spread the germ. So bottom line, pertussis is coming back. It's a horrible illness. It's, it's very infectious. It can kill children. We need to get people immunized again to prevent that. Let's switch and talk about measles. Measles is also coming back. Same issues, Dr. Wally. Why is measles coming back? I thought we had that under control a couple years ago. 
Yes, I've mentioned that earlier about the um, the scare, the community <clears throat> scare um, over the autism link with measles, mumps, rubella vaccination. Parents are they're afraid. Um, it it took 12 years before the journal that was originally responsible for publishing that false data. Um, it took 12 years before they retracted it. So. Um, Parents, you know, we just have to do a good job of enlightening, um, you know, enlightening our um, our patients and letting them know that there really is not a link. But that's where that's why we're seeing a reemergence of um, of measles because parents are not vaccinating their children. And Dr. Katon, the measles vaccine safe? Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree that measles vaccine is safe. And one of the issues that we're also having is that we're a global community. We go international traveling, and because of that, you yourself may not want to get the vaccine, but you're going to be in touch with other people who've gone globally overseas, Africa, India, other places where measles may be more endemic than in the, in the United States. So you, just because we live in a small little area of Dallas, we think, oh, we shouldn't have measles, but other people are traveling and coming back and may have got infected, and that's why the vaccine is so important. So what are the signs of measles? How can you tell if your child has measles right now? Well, um, it starts off, you know, sort of like, you know, a lot of viral infections, and that's with, you know, the cough, the fever. Um, but in addition, they will develop a rash. Now, as we know, there are a lot of rashes um, in the pediatric world, but um, particularly this rash um, may, you know, also start in the mouth. There may be spots in the mouth, in the uh, back part of the mouth, as well as uh, the pattern of the rash. It sort of, it starts in the, the face and then it gradually progresses down to the chest and to the back, to the trunk, to the arms, and then the, le and then the legs. And it's sort of just a, you know, all over reddish, you know, with small little pinpoint rash that you know can occur over the entire body and the complications that we you know get concerned about are you know brain damage or brain inflammation as well as pneumonia especially in children so we're concerned about this measles disease coming back and children of course should be vaccinated how about adults Dr. Katon who should get the vaccine in the adult population well, mostly a lot of our immunocompromised patients do get the vaccine for the measles, mumps, rubella. We also have had people who recently, including healthcare workers, have been having their immunity checked, and it's a simple blood test. You can do mumps antibody uh, for the measles, mumps, rubella. There's roseola antibody, rubella antibodies, and mumps antibody, and we can check your immunization status. And if you don't have it, then we recommend you get immunized, especially if you're over 65. Those patients really are at risk for the pneumonia and the brain damage that can occur as well as in children. So a simple blood test can tell you if you have antibodies, if you are immune to the illness, and if you're not, you can get a vaccination. That's an easy idea. So if there's a question, just ask your doctor for a blood test. Can you tell if I am immune from the measles? Dr. One of the things I will say from the electronic health record, you can't look up measles antibodies, so people will have to remember to look up roseola. That's right. Different than uh, measles. I've tried that several times myself. That's right. Okay, so, now wait, let's make this clear now. So there's rubella and there's roseola. What's the difference there? It's just the terminology for German measles and or like what we refer to as measles normal. And measles normal is called roseola. Yeah. And the other one is rubella is the German measles for some reason. Must have been started back in Germany a long time ago. I don't remember that. <laughs> So um, another illness we need to worry about, vaccination, and here again also with, with whooping cough and with the measles, vaccination can prevent that illness. Treatment, on the other hand, can be difficult. So when you see a case of whooping cough, sometimes you're already too late with those folks. The same with the measles. We want to help prevent that in the first place with vaccinations. Now, if people want more information about this, they can, of course, go to the Baylor website and look this up, but also the CDC, if you use that, Dr. Katon, that's a good site that you use for information. When I had two cases of pertussis a couple of years ago at Baylor, we had to call the CDC and we had the infectious disease doctors with us. And what we did, we actually had um, to, we put them on the IV antibiotics and it's the complications from being hospitalized from whooping cough that can get them very ill because they got uh, super infections in addition to it. Mm -hmm. And so for the elderly as well as the youngsters, that's where our biggest concern is for whooping cough. 
and we used the CDC website. We used the Baylor website because the Baylor website was on our internet and we were able to import data from the CDC. They were very helpful, both of them. And that's BaylorHealth.com as a website. Also, this blog now is called Scrubbing In. So the Scrubbing In blog, you'll be able to see more information about this and other illnesses as we talk about them in the future. Dr. Wild, anything else about childhood illnesses? Have we got this covered with whooping cough and with the measles? Well, I just want to make one other point, um, you know, to our women of childbearing age. Of course, um, you are not a, you know, there are some people who we can vaccinate and some people we cannot vaccinate. And we do not recommend women um, who are pregnant to be vaccinated with MMR because this is a live vaccine. It's a live partially killed vaccine, you know, it's, it's, it's injured, it's an injured uh, vaccine, but it is a live vaccine, so we do not recommend this for pregnant women. However, women of childbearing age um, should check their immunity with their physician to make sure that they are um, immunized against MMR because infection while you're pregnant can be detrimental to the un unborn fetus. So I just wanted to make that point. And then with pertussis, though, different story with pertussis. Different Explain story with pertussis, exactly. Um, um, and I'm glad you brought that up. To contrast, um, you are actually, it's actually recommended that you become vaccinated with um, Tdap, again, which is the vaccine that we give for pertussis, and that is with every pregnancy. And that may not be the 10-year span that we spoke about earlier, and that's okay because we want to make sure that the unborn fetus um, has passive immunity that they will receive from the mother. So we do indeed recommend vaccination with every pregnancy in the third trimester for pregnant women. And even if you were pregnant last year, you get pregnant again, still mm -hmm. another vaccine they're recommending. Is that yes, they, they, that's currently the recommendations from the CDC. Yeah, until we get caught up with this whooping cough epidemic they're talking about. That's right. And then with measles, a simple blood test, Dr. Katon, I saw a patient the other day, he said, I've got a grandkid coming in about a month. Uh, do I need a shot? We did the blood test. He was immunized, so he didn't have to have one. That's the easy thing to do with the measles, correct? Yes, and uh, like we were just discussing, sometimes the difficulty is a lot of insurance companies don't pay for that test, but it is a very simple test, does not cost that much money, and it per and I think it's very helpful in regarding to immunity instead of having to give someone another live vaccine. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for your attention. We'll have other topics in weeks to come. Uh, this is Baylor's Scrubbing In blog, Baylor Healthcare System, talking about whooping cough and measles. The regular measles, Dr. Case, and not the German measles, that's a <laughs> right? Absolutely. Uh, anything else, Dr. Wiley, Dr. Katon? Nope. Uh, no, but sir. I do recommend, like Dr. Wiley and you were just saying, in regards to the Tdap, because this, a lot of physicians still don't know, they do need to immunize childbearing or pregnant women in that last trimester, and a lot of people say, oh no, you had it 10 years ago, you don't need it, and this was a big discussion among physicians themselves, they need to let people who are pregnant take that Tdap. So please follow us at Scrubbing In blog or BaylorHealthCare.com. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you.